Hello, it's Mr. Ops. And Mr. Krivis. And today we're going to do some linear regression with our GDC. And so linear regression is just basically finding a line of best fit with our graphing calculator. And if we take a look at this, we have a problem here, which you have in your packet as well. And this is what the problem is going to be today. We are going to create a scatter plot with the data that we have down here. And so we have to go to our calculator and we have to put this into our uh, list one and two. So I'm going to go stat, I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to put it in L1 and 2, but I see that L1 is full. So to clear L1, I go on top of L1, I hit clear and enter, and that clears it all off. And then I'm going to make my x values, so we get 2, 3, negative 1, 0, 5. And then going over to L2, we'll go 1, 0, 3, 2, negative 4, enter. Okay, so now to make the scatter plot, I'm going to go to second y equals, which is our stat plot. I'm going to turn on number 1 by hitting enter and make it bold, the on button bold. And I want this first kind here is going to be a scatter plot. My x values are L1 and my y values of the coordinates are L2. And then I'm going to go zoom to number 9, which is a nice zoom fit window. And there's my line of best fit that I can see. There's your scatter plot. There's my scatter oh, Right, thank you. Now, I've been using this for my vectors unit, so I've got to make sure that I have it in the right mode. But as we look at this set of data, we want to describe the direction, the strength, and the, t the trend and see if there's any outliers at all. So if you look at this line here, what kind of direction would you say that it has there, Mr. Kerbis? Southwest. <laughs> so that means it is a negative direction. Uh, how about the strength? You think there's a strong linear correlation, a moderate, or a weak? It looks like if I drew a line, most points would be close to it, so I'm going to go with strong. Okay. Okay, and the trend, well, it's definitely a straight line, so it's a linear trend. And then, would you say there are any outliers here? Any outliers in our... Any of the ones that look like they're far away from the general trend? Nothing too obvious. I would say no outliers. Okay, now it says calculate the mean of the x values. And the notation for this is x bar. Well, if I want to calculate the mean of my x values, I want to go to... If I have my list that I've been working on, I want to find the mean of all these values here. So to do that, I go stat. I'm going to calculate, and I'm going to do one variable statistics. And I'm going to do it on, oh, I did it all. Here, I'll try that again. So stat, calc, one variable stati statistics, and I'm going to do it on L1. Hit enter, and I should get my x bar, my, x, my mean to be 1.0 x bar equals 1.8. Calculate y bar, which is the mean of the y values. Again, I'm going to go to my stat, calc, one variables. And now I want to put in my second list. And my frequency would be 1, because some of the, the operating systems are a little bit different. The frequency is 1. If I hit this, I get... Now it says x bar here, though. Does that make any sense, Mr. Kerbis? Yeah. So this is x bar here? <laughs> no, it's y bar is 0 0.4. And what it's done then is uh, the calculator notation is, is told you for what you told it, which was L2. And in L2, you inputted the values in the y table under the y column, 1, 0, 3, 2, minus 4, negative 4, and added them up, divide by 5. Your calculator will do that all in one nice step for you. OK. So, thank you for that. So now, E part says, choose two representative points from the data to create a line of best fit, and we'll call it L1. Is well, this a regression line? Mm, it's kind of like, kind of like a handmade regression line, I guess. It's our own personal line of best fit. We're going to do it ourselves. We're going to take maybe these, this point. Let's just take two points that kind of are far apart. I'm going to take this point here, and we'll take this point here. And we're going to create our line of best fit. 
All right, so to do it, let's go, um, we know we have to find our slope. Slope will be the y values subtracted and over the x value subtracted, 3 minus 5. And so I get 4 over negative 2, which is negative 2. And then finding our equation, we use y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. We'll plug some values in here. Um, what should we make? What's, what, what's y1 going to be there, Mr. Kerbis? Uh, we can go with 0 because 0 is easy to work with. Okay, we'll use this one. Equals, and then we get negative 2. x minus x1 then is going to be 3. How come I can't put in 5? Well, because I have to use the same coordinate point that I used. Ah. So I get y is equal to negative 2x plus 6. Okay, so let's take this here. Oh, ah. Let's see if I can just take this bit here. We'll copy it and we'll keep it with us over here. And paste it down over here. Make ourselves a new window. We'll take this with us. And we'll have some space over here. Okay, so now if I'm going to sketch that line, I know plus 6 is my y-intercept. I go down 2, over 2, down 2, over 2, and I will get approximately this line here. If I go to my y equals in my calculator, oh, I've been doing vectors. Let me change my mode to function mode quick. And if I go here, I go negative 2x plus 6. And graph it. And there's the point that we see here. I've chosen these two points for my line. Ooh, bad choices. Bad, bad choices. <laughs> Oh, well, today we're not going to worry about that. But this is a very important point because you cannot just take any two points. If you see the, the x and the y values, they were not ranked in order. So x started at 2, then went to 3, then minus 1, 0, and 5. So we actually, by picking 3, 0, and 5, minus 4, we picked the last two points. It would have been better to pick two points on the, on the trend line and use the trace feature maybe. Right. But at the same time, it doesn't matter you could have picked any combination of these points and you would have got a line of best fit. Now what we're going to show you is how to use the regression feature to minimize the, well, we won't go into the, what it does, right. but it's going to find a much better regression line for us. So we should have chosen negative 1, 3 perhaps. And maybe that last one there, which if we trace down to it. Mm, I'm at the end now. I'm going to go back. Just moving around my arrows, I could find that it's going to be, did I see it? Yeah, you had it 5 minus 4. Ah, 5 minus 4. This was the other version. If I would have used these two by using the trace feature, I could have probably gotten a better line that would be. All right, so that is E part done. Now it says, using your GDC, find line 2. Well, let's quit this screen. If I go stat now and calculate... I want to find my linear regression here, linear regression, number four. I know my x values are in L1, comma, my y values are in L2, and I want to put it into Y2 this time because Y1 already has my bad equation in there. So if I go alpha trace as a shortcut, I can go down to Y2, and if I hit enter, it's going to take this information and put it into my graph, and if I graph it now, Ah, uh, much better. Much better. Here's a nice line that the calculator came up with. And that equation is, let me call it back, what we just did. That equation will be y equals, our a value is the slope, negative 1.07, or 0 0.8 to three significant figures, x plus 2.34. Excellent. So that's quite a difference in slope. Yeah, very much so. All right, so now, are L1 and L2 reasonably close? Well, if I would have chosen better points, I think they would have been more reasonable. But now, I think, are they reasonably close? 
What do you think, Mr. Kerbis? How do no. you think L1 and L2 compare to each other? I think not very well. Right. The one thing they do, they both have a negative slope, so they're both going in the same direction, but they're not close at all. More often than not, if you choose two good points, these slopes will be fairly close. The y-intercepts might be a little bit different. Okay, then it says, show that x by y bar is on L2. Well, we know for sure it won't be on L1. Right, <laughs> of course that, because I didn't do a very good job. So here's x bar, y bar here, 1.8 and 0 0.4. So 1.8 is x, 0 0.4 is y. If we want to show this on the line, I take it and I plug it into this equation here. So 0 0.4 is y is equal to negative 1.08. x is 1.8 plus 2.34. Now, will this work exactly? It, well, I've rounded here, so it's going to not be very close. But if I look over in this calculation, I'm showing what substitution I'm doing. If I trace this and go to my y2, I change to y2, and I type in 1.8, it will give me a feedback of 0 0.4. And I can say that my answer is correctly 0 0.4. It's equal. So therefore, on the line. Will that always be true for x bar, y bar, Mr. Kerbis? For the regression line, it will always be true. All right, so now, find the angle the line makes with the positive x-axis. So, hmm, so imagine I have this line here. At, here's about two and a bit, and it's going down something like here with the positive x-axis. That means I'm looking for this angle here. Why not the other one? Well, good question. Let's do the other one. We'll do, always do the acute angle for grade 9. We'll do the other one. Let's do this one with the positive x-axis. We'll always look for the acute angle. And so to do that, I know my slope. I can make a little triangle here. My slope, or I could go this way as well. My slope is negative 1.8 my rise of negative 1.8, my run of 1. And so I know that the opposite is equal to tangent over adjacent from your grade 8 trigonometry unit. Mm -hmm. Good. And so this is equal to negative 1.08, which is my opposite side from my angle here, opposite, and the adjacent is 1. And so if I want to find theta, I'm going to go to my calculator, make sure I'm going to put it in degree mode. Degree mode. And then I'm going to go, to find the angle, I go second tangent, negative 1.08, divide by 1, and I get negative 4.7 degrees. Negative 47? 47, thank you. Negative 47.2 degrees. This is the angle that it makes. The negative just tells me that it's going kind of, it's a negative slope. This is probably the best what I can explain what the negative is without getting into too much tri trigonometry at this point. So there's how we can find the angle using tangent from last year. We can find our... If you're not comfortable with that being a negative angle, remember that distances in triangles from grade 8 were always positive when we measured them. So keeping away from the coordinate grid, just building on grade 8, rise over run, keep it as 1.08 over 1, and when you take the inverse tan of 1.08, you'll get the angle 47, which is perfectly fine for, for this year. Until grade 11, then we'll talk about some other reasons. But let's, let's keep the, the absolute value of the magnitudes of the side of the triangle. Either way, just know how to interpret that last result. It's a nice, nice review of trig from grade 8. Okay, great.